and welcome to another edition of Pop It. And we're popping in this chat with my work buddies, my besties, my college barista bestie, my supervisor, who I put down as a reference for every job I apply for. It's Christian Hinton in the house, the hottest single in Lakewood. We got Karen Adams happily married, but maybe she'll give you a kiss if you're lucky. And of course, tech wizard and very interesting devil's advocate, John Toth, joining the chat. <laughs> I hope you all love those intros because those were off the cuff and I think they were fabulous. So it felt right. Yeah. yeah it felt really good. You know, I mean, a lot of it had to do with physical attraction, but you're hot. People, Pretty so spot on. I'm not going to yeah, lie. I mean, we're hot. <laughs> okay, yeah. We're all hot. Anywho, if you've not, if you've not watched Pop It before, it's really simple. We have five pop culture topics. Each of our guests gets 30 seconds to take their spin, their jokes, whatever they want to say. I give points based on how I feel about it. And then it's a subjective winner at the end. So we're going to get right into it with arguably the best topic of the all five. Nicki Minaj went on Twitter and said that her cousin's friend, got the vaccine and apparently had giant balls that led to a canceled wedding. Nicki Minaj, potential stupid hoe, or is she an anaconda-sized beacon of knowledge for vaccine awareness? Uh, Christian, let's start with you on this Nicki take. Look, I think almost everyone here has DJed with me. Karen, maybe not, but I think all of you know, I've almost canceled a few weddings because of my big balls myself. So, you know, I sub the, you can't help it. Unfortunately, it was blamed on the the foolproof vaccine. So, you know, everyone's safe. Uh, but uh, look, this guy's got big balls. What can we do about it? Uh, good for him. That's what I have to say. But Nikki, get her back on Twitter. We need her. We need her, her big butt and her that's big opinion. That's your time. That's your time. Things are big with Nikki. That's for sure. Oh, okay, Karen, sir. Nikki Minaj, are you team big balls or what? Yeah, so I think my first question is, why was Nicki Minaj concerned about the size of her balls? <laughs> I feel like that's a fair enough argument. The second one is, when have we ever trusted the opinion of my cousin's friend? Like, that's like saying, like, my stepson's nephew's cousin, that's who I buy my weed brownies from. Like, we don't need that. <laughs> I think... That again, like like Christian mentioned, oh, it's that's your the time. foolproof vaccine. She done. That's, that's your time. That's your time. John Toth, I feel like you got a spicy one here. Nicki Minaj, is she valid or is she just off the rocker? Well, first of all, shout out to Nicki Minaj, one of the greatest artists to play at a wedding, you know. But uh, first of all, I would like to say uh, shame on Pfizer and Moderna for not taking this chance to, you know, um, have Nicki Minaj be a spokesperson for them. I think they're missing a whole demographic with the vaccine where you could say, hey, take the vaccine and make your balls huge. There'll be plenty of people who are refusing to take the vaccine right now that'll take it just for that reason. So, you know, as always, shout out to Nicki Minaj. And, you know, if you want your balls big, buy some Moderna. That's where it's at. Wow. That Christian, is you want them hilarious. bigger? They need, they must be bigger. Here, here's my thing. <laughs> <laughs> Who is going to keep No, if, uh, this bride must be the only bride that would cancel because her husband's balls got big. Girl, people would kill if their balls got big. Like, babe, like John said. just chortle them. Just chortle them. And, and you know what? This sounds like, you know, when you were in camp and they'd be like, hey, let's tell ghost stories. Well, my cousin's friend got the vaccine and then they canceled the wedding because of big balls. It just is the most ridiculous statement. And for her to even think that that's like a legitimate thing she should tweet. Like, I'm sure I want to know exactly why this wedding got canceled. I bet it was something scandalous. I bet he got the vaccine and a case of syphilis. There's something going that we don't know. There's some, I know Christian's eyes were like, oh my heavens. But we there's something going up. on. We need a follow up. We need an expose need immediately. But Nikki. We need a part two. Oh, Nikki, just, mm, I don't know what else to say on this. Meanwhile, at the Met Gala, AOC, she went with a text the rich dress. Uh, is this a statement overkill eye rolling lot of reactions? Toth, back to you. Oh, well, first of all, I gave her a shout out. She did look good in the dress, but extremely poor taste. I mean, you're, you're at the most expensive event of the year where you have to spend like $200,000 to get a ticket to it. And you're going to be blaming, you know, tax the rich, which is basically the people you're going to the event with. And it's just, you know, it, it, you're putting the spotlight on the wrong thing. Uh, it's the wrong place. It's the wrong time. I'd like to see her wear that dress and go to like downtown Cleveland and see what happens, you know? <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, really? Karen, I know you're pro tax the rich, eat them up like nom, 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 me on a, one Fucking, of those hungry hippos. Yes. Uh, I what, loved it. I love loved it? it. 
I thought, A, she also looked amazing. Yes. I did, however, I think that I learned that the person who designed her dress, the design company, doesn't actually pay their taxes. So there was a little bit of a slip in that. So that's embarrassing. However, the whole point of that dress was to bring that statement to the rich people so that they know that we're trying to tax their asses. I don't think it was a bad place or a bad time. I think that was the only place and the only time. All the rich people are together. Y'all here now? Let's tax you. <laughs> Christian, o -A OAC's dress, is that an OK decision or an OC you later? Oh, look, AOC, uh, whether or not we, we can discuss the merits and the ethical dilemmas of her wearing such a dress, but um look if i if i ever get the chance to wear uh something at the met gala uh and i had something that could be a big red letters and aoc was there i'm sure i would put something like uh aoc text me or something look she's beautiful <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what can i say i look she I, whether or not i agree with her uh there's some things we could agree on i'm sure so that uh, i'm sure we could get into another day but uh, she could she could tax me any day. So. Okay, good to know. Christian is down for dinner. He'll buy and cover the taxes. I will um, buy. Go buy. <laughs> I will say I thought it was um an in, it was a, it was definitely a statement piece. I mean everyone was talking oh, yeah. about it. I mean Fox News was probably airing it all day the next day. I'm sure. Uh, I do wonder. John makes a good point. You know she got the ticket for free. She didn't pay to be there. She was invited. Uh, but yeah, you're in an event where like, you know, it, it's very edgy. I think it's a little BA because how many people were like, I'm not going to go talk to her because I make $4 million and I skirt on my texts every year. It, it was an, it was interesting, but she did look good. I can agree with that. All right. Get your stripes ready. My tigers, uh, all my cat friends, tiger King twos on the way, but with Joe in jail and Carol Baskin refuses to be part of this Tiger King two. What's the point? What are they going to cover? Do we care? Are you going to watch? A lot of questions. Christian seems to be, have disappeared. Oh, no, there he is. Oh, Christian, please take it away. Speaking of tiger, here is my tiger. This is tiger. His name is literally tiger. Hey, look, uh, nobody cares about Carol Baskin. Nobody cares about that whole stupid thing anymore. That was like a whole pandemic thing that, look, I didn't even watch it. I don't care. If they're going to make a Tiger King documentary, I think they should make a documentary about all the kittens like mine named Tiger. And they need to highlight the owners because, look, I need highlighted. So, hey, if they make a Tiger King documentary about my kitty Tiger, I would love that. Love it. That's your time. Christian, very desperate today. Asking for dates, asking for documentaries about him and his animals. But, you know, this is your platform, sweetie. You do you. Uh, Karen. You're 30 seconds. What do you think about Tiger King 2? Are you too excited? So I didn't watch the first one, so I don't give one little fuck. <laughs> Whoa! Is that <laughs> it? <laughs> I I was not drawn to it in any way. Oh I was not I did not allow myself to be swayed into watching it. And I I don't think that's something that should be celebrated. And Ooh. the people who it's even about don't even want to be in it anymore. Ooh. I don't think we need another one. Ooh, Karen, I like that. Let's spice. get a documentary about actual tigers in the actual wild that are going extinct. Ooh. Thank you. Mike drop. Oh, poetry over there. John Toth, Tiger King 2. Well, much like Karen, I didn't watch the first one either. And really, I guess my, my biggest fear with this is that they know that there's another lockdown coming. And that'd be the only reason why anybody would watch a Tiger King 2. Um, because That's honestly, a theory. Yeah, I mean, the first one ran its course. It was pop culture, but it ain't coming back. Mm -hmm. You know, as the only person here who did watch it, I do agree it was part of, like, the pandemic fuel. It's kind of like when you do a threesome and you're drunk and high and there's a gun to your head, and then the next morning you're like, what just happened? That's kind of what Tiger King was looking back on it. You're like... Okay, the cute cat, Christian. I mean, that is adorable. Oh, he's scratching you. Uh, certainly, you, I agree with you there. Your cat would make a better documentary. Uh, Joe's in jail. He did the crime. What's there to talk about anymore? Carol Baskin's not doing it. Who, I, I don't care if they cover the zookeepers. I don't care about any of them. No, it's ridiculous, but I'll probably still watch it because that's I'm that kind of bitch. All right, topic four. The voice actors for the Mario movie have been announced coming out next year. And the reviews a little mixed, particularly Chris Pratt as Mario and then Seth Rogen as Donkey Ke Heat. Donkey Kong is getting heat. Excuse me. What do we think of the casting, John? I mean, this is a kid's movie, if we're going to be entirely honest. Like, 
they basically had all the same voice actors for the uh, Lego movies, and those did well. I mean, I, if we really expect, like, great drama out of this, and that Chris Pat isn't the perfect cast for, uh, casting for Mario, it's like, what are you really expecting out of this movie? I think it's a good job of getting, like, an all-star cast together. I hope it's fun. I hope people like it. I hope it's somewhat nostalgic. But what are we really worried about here? Were we upset that we didn't get Liam Neeson's Mario? Like, what's the problem? Karen, Mario, are you ready to party or are you ready to go off and not see it? Okay, so uh, my initial thought is that I didn't actually know that this was in the works. Mm -hmm. So there's that. Uh, my second thought is, is Chris Pratt going to go for the it's a me, Mario kind of voice? Or is he going to hit us with his dulcet tones that we're all used to and what you expect from Chris Pratt movie? And which one am I going to prefer? Questions Either have been way, raised. I probably won't see it. <laughs> the consensus today is that we don't see a lot of things i think we we all can agree on that today we're all pretty we got better things to do with our time christian uh mario is this one spicy mama mia pizza or no listen to this so when i was a kid i lived in lake Stevens. hold on first off just give me one second he's making his announcement he's talking about the mario thing I yeah, just want how he loved the game right I love that game. I never had a quarter. So I, I'd either steal them from the wishing well. All right, whatever. He, he's trying to, I, I thought he just went right into the Mario voice. It's horrible. It's horrible. Like the game. I'm sorry. Mario, it, it's a dated character. It's a dated game. It's a dated idea. Make new ideas. Make new movies. Make something else. There's other actors other than Chris fucking Pratt. And I'm just going to say that right there. Mm -hmm. uh -uh. No, there are not. <laughs> there are other actors. Oh, that's Chris all Pratt. Of wow. He's the only one. Chris Pratt and uh, there's like there's all those other Chris's. I suppose we could choose from. <laughs> Listen, I am not a fan of Chris Pratt ever since it came out that he is like conservative and hates gays and loves guns and hates women and all this jazz. I and listen, you can you can do all that and be fine in my book, but I don't want you to be my Mario. You can be my some hunk of steel doing whatever but don't you be my mario you think mario's homophobic him and luigi have definitely done it so mm -hmm. i really i really feel like i don't know i didn't love it I, i'm 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 like karen i probably won't see it i'll probably be too busy doing my own thing but eh, moving on that's kind of how i feel eh, moving on i think uh, we should take this moment to say that we all want the chris pratt that was andy dwyer that's when I liked Chris Pratt before everything came out about him. That's that was back when he was just living in a van, like a normal weird dude. Right. I know that's the celebrities I relate to most are the ones who live in vans. That's for sure. Uh, ben Platt and Dear Evan Hats in the movie bombs in reviews and at the box office. Was this just bad casting? They had Ben Platt, 28 years old, playing a teenager in the movie. It just looked bad. Uh, what do we think of this whole development? And uh, the, I guess the ethics of, should he have stepped aside or not? Christian, back to you. I think it's pretty funny. Uh, I think this should be classified as a comedy. First off, uh, obviously, I don't know about the subject matter. I think it's about a kid with anxiety. We're not going to joke about that. Whatever. The fact that they are bringing some dude who was younger 10 years ago to play a character who was young is so weird to me and it's it just shouts weird and and it also shouts like lazy why can't we find another let's get let's bring this back up sorry for this word let's find another fucking actor uh for once you get a different idea make something refresh now that's like, your time that's your just, time look younger how stupid that's your time karen uh dear evan hansen did you want to write a dear john to this movie or what yeah, I mean, I like thinking of what other like Hollywood people do, though, it, like all, all of those like drama TV shows are people that are in their like 20s who are playing kids in high school. Like uh, now I won't be able to think of any, but I know that that's what they do out there. However, this dude already had this part. So I think that I agree with Christian. They're just being lazy. They already know that he's good at it because he opened the show when it was on Broadway. Mm -hmm. Week. Yep. John, dear Evan Hansen, is it a mm bop of a time or no? I mean, in all honesty, I would have never heard about this uh, movie if it wasn't for the casting decision to make somebody old do it. 
So they should have just went the other way and just got somebody infinitely older and just got like Anthony Hopkins to play him. That was the only way this movie was going to get any kind of buzz and have anybody watch it. So I really think they made the right choice because oh, they made somewhat of a controversial pick so people can actually, um, you know, watch it just to be like, wow, this guy is so old. But at this point, they should have just went the other way because nobody was going to see it anyway. Mm. Yeah, you know, listen, I'm not the Republican Party. I don't believe in child labor. So we shouldn't have a child doing this role. I get that. I get that it's probably gonna be someone who's at least 20. I get that. But he looks like a child predator in the school. He looks like someone let him in the front door and they're gonna go, you know, like the the predator alarm when you hide in the corner, which like that's gonna stop the predator from touching you because you're hiding in the corner, right? Like what's that about? It's like truly the worst plan of attack. (laughs) It's like, great, you're all there in the corner, grabby hands. Um, But, you know, I wonder, is this like an ego thing? Was he like, well, I was the original Dear Evan Hansen, so I deserve to be in it for the movie. You know, was Chris Pratt unavailable? That's what I also (laughs) want to know. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, could. (laughs) Probably could do it. Um, I I just think this is is kind of like karma, right? You're going to put someone who looks like they're the staff member in the role of a 16-year-old kid. You're, no one's going to want to watch it. It's just not believable. When someone who's 22 or someone like Christian can pass for 16, we we think it's believable, right? So I guess they should have hired Christian. I, and he looks like he wants a job. So please, if you're a casting director for a high school movie, hire this man and hire me as the teacher. And it's like a fun teacher that kind of gets in trouble with me the too. I want to be in the movie too. Oh my God, girl. Yes. <laughs> John can be the custodian. All right. So. <laughs> oh my god stop playing chris pratt i'm so over him today we're over him all right these were some it's me it's a me these were some spicy uh, comments uh karen 28 points for karen 29 points for john and christian 31 points oh Christian. Was it because he was shamelessly throwing himself out there to be picked up by others? <laughs> Listen, I'm not usually a fan of cats to get my drifts, but that cat looked really cute. So that, oh. I mean, that helped a little bit. Dang, he ha- he was he was able to bring props into his. That's not fair. Right. Uh, it, pop it. There's no rules. It's just it's just bedlam. It's like an apocalyptic video game. Just do whatever you want. You All right, know? I'm gonna have to set myself on fire next time. <laughs> okay, you would have won. You would have won. Hands down. I'll be ready. John is muted, but he looks upset. <laughs> He's like, I got to go back to doing custodian work on the Dear Evan Hansen movie work. <laughs> he was both the custodian in the movie and for the set. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, <laughs> two for one. All righty. Well, you guys, this was another delicious game of Pop It. We have certainly popped these pop culture topics. And I'll see you next time. Peace out. <laughs>